Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing a summary of all the grade 10 trig graphs related to the graphs, the drawing, the equations and deductions. Now standardly we got y is equal to a sin theta plus q. The way we are going to get a is we are going to take the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. But when I am talking of maximum minus minimum, it must be within one period. So sometimes they intentionally only give you half a graph. Like if you take the following graph, that is a sun graph. But I have only given you half. So the maximum is 1 and it looks like the minimum is 0. But you have to take the maximum and minimum of one complete cycle, which means the minimum is actually minus 1. So when you are getting the equations of the graph, make sure that the a is maximum minus minimum divided by 2, but it must be within one period range. Now what is one period? One period is one complete cycle. If you remember in our mother graphs, when we are talking of the period, we are talking of how long does it take to start from a certain point and then end at that point going through its complete cycle. I started at 0 and then I ended at 360 degrees. But look, the point that I am referring to that is the same is the y. Do you realize y is 0 at this point and then y is 0 at this point? Now how come I am not stopping at 180 because y is also 0 there? Because it is not a complete cycle. I have gone up and then I have got down. I went down. So I have gone up and then I went down. And if you continued, then look, now I am repeating the stuff. So as soon as I started repeating, that is a period. So a period is one complete cycle. And for a sun graph, the period is 360 degrees. Let's look at a cos graph. One complete cycle, it's starting at 0 and it's ending here. And then you're going to see it starts repeating itself. So one complete cycle is 360 degrees for a cos graph. Now look at a tan graph. I'm going up and then I'm doing a bottom layer. But look now. What is happening? It starts repeating itself. So at what point did it start repeating itself? It started repeating itself at 180 degrees. So the period for a tan graph is 180 degrees. So when I'm talking of maximum minus minimum divided by 2, you must look at the period. Now, if I'm talking of Q, we must know the starting points of the graphs. For a sin theta, the starting point is 0, 0. For a cos, it is 0 and A. When I'm talking of A, I'm referring to that A. And then, if I talk of 10, 10 is also 0, 0. Now, if I'm working with Q, you need to know their starting points. And then, Q will depend on how far astray are they from these points. When you're looking at Q, you should look, okay, the graph should have started at 0. If we take a 10 graph, So I should have started at 0, but now I'm starting at 2. So what happens to my Q? It means plus 2. So we know number 1, we know number 2, we're going to look at the starting points. And then number 3, we need to know if it's a positive A, then it's our standard mother graphs. When it is a negative A, it means our graphs are going upside down. Remember with your 10, your asymptotes are still staying the same. Okay, But your values, your graph swaps upside down. Just like how these ones, you see it was going up then it was going down now it's going down then it's going up so basically they are reflection on the 
x-axis. So this one would go like this. Can you see how it's turning? If you take this one, if it's reflecting, it's that way and it's that way. So it's like a reflection over the x axis. So if you had put a mirror there, then it would look exactly like that. Okay, so remember the third thing is to check if it's a original graph or it's a upside down graph. Now, let us see how this becomes handy. Okay, now, what happens is, Deductions is like the perfect way to do a summary of your entire work because if you can do a deductions graph then you've basically covered all your work but more the only thing that you wouldn't have covered is the drawing of the graph okay so in the deductions you'll see they'll cover equations they'll ask equi uh, questions related to reading of the graphs so basically by practicing on deductions you're going to make yourself strong across the entire part of trigonometry now let's look at this one, right? We want to get the equations of the graph. First we know I'm looking at A. Now if I'm working with the sin graph, then I know this is a sin graph. So how are we going to get the equation? The highest point, so we're going to take it as 4, and the lowest point is 0. Now you can see it is one complete cycle. So the A is going to be 4 minus 0 divided by 2, which is equal to 2. Then what is the Q? The starting point of a sin graph is 0, 0. Now it's starting at 2. So we know our Q is going to equal to 2. Now C, is this an upside down graph? or standard graph. You can clearly see it's standard, so I know my A is positive. Now let's go to B. We are looking at the cos graph. Now the cos graph, the maximum is 3 and the minimum is 1. So my B is going to equal to 3 minus 1 over 2, which gives me B is equal to 1. Now, is it a standard graph or is it upside down? Remember, a cos standard graph goes like this. And this looks like it's perfectly standard. So it's a positive B. Now our P. The cos graph should have started at your B and 0. So what it's saying is it should have started at 1 and 0. But it's not starting at 1. It's starting at 3. So what happened to my P? It went up 2. So my P is equal to 2. When we are asking how to get the equation, we are using these methods. You've seen how we applied it in the deduction. The next thing you need to know is the deductions. The maximum is usually the highest point that you will see. The minimum is the lowest point. When I'm talking of period, I'm talking of one complete cycle. But in grade 10, the complete cycle is standard. Sin theta is 360, cos theta is 360 degrees, and tan theta is 180 degrees. In grade 10, this information doesn't change. Then we have, what is the amplitude? The amplitude is the highest point on the graph, but not just the highest point. It's the highest point on the graph from point of rest. Now really that's a lot of vocabulary. In simple words it's saying, if you look, the perfect place to look for your amplitude is your A. So simply look at your graph, look at the A, and make sure it's positive. That's all. Don't do calculations. Don't, don't even look at your graph. If you can avoid your graph and just look at your equation, then just look at your equation. So the perfect place to take your amplitude is from your equation, not from your drawing. After you have amplitude, then they ask you questions like the domain and the range. Now the domain and the range is basically 
what can you see from your graph? That the domain is X related and your range is Y related. Remember at all times you're going to go from lowest to highest. How would I know if I'm using round or square brackets? The only time you're going to use round bracket is when I have an asymptote. That would be in your 10 graphs. But otherwise, you're going to use round brackets. Now, let us go and use this information. All right. Now, it says, calculate the domain and the range of f of x. Now, here you could see that f of x was the sin graph. So, I'm looking at the sin graph, which is this blue I am asking for the domain. The domain is the x value. What is the x value from its starting till the ending? Now the x value at this point is 0. So the domain is 0 and the end point is 360 degrees. So for my f of x, the domain is 0 to 360. What is the range? The lowest point is here. But what is the y value of this low, lowest point? It is 0. My highest point is at that point. What is the y value at that point? 4. So my range is 0 to 4. Now remember, it's always lowest to highest. If you write 4 to 0, it's incorrect. If you write 360 to 0, it's incorrect. It's always from lowest to highest. Then they're asking, what is the maximum of f? Now, if you're looking at the f again, f is my sin graph. What is the maximum? So, what is the highest point it's touching? It's 4. Calculate the amplitude of g of x. Now, I told you, when you're looking at the amplitude, it is safer to look at your equation. So, if you look here, we have b is your amplitude. We've calculated b to be 1. So, the amplitude of g of x is going to equal to 1. Now, if you take it mathematically, you're going to have minus, you're going to have 3 minus 1 because the highest minus the lowest and then you're going to divide it by 2 which will still give me 1. The reason I tell you to use your equation is sometimes they only give you half the graph. Like what if I only gave you, for the, the, the sin, I only drew the graph till here. So I totally eliminated this part. So you'd only see 4 and you'll see 2. But that's not correct because the point of rest is 2. The highest point in a complete period would be 4 and 0. So you can see how deceiving that is. Be careful, you rather use the equation to determine amplitude. Or once you know how to get the equation of the graph, you know how to do domain and range. You know, you know how to get the maximum, the amplitude. Again, I'm emphasizing for the amplitude. Look at the equation and not at the graph. Like if I ask you what is the amplitude of f of x, you're going to tell me it's 2 because the a is 2. But when you start looking at the graph and they intentionally only give you half the graph, it's easy to make a mistake. Now let's look at the next thing. How do we read the information? Determine where g of x is greater than 0. Now, greater than 0 means the y value is positive. The entire of g of x is positive. Can you see that? So, where is g of x greater than 0? Usually, they're referring to in terms of x. So, it is greater than 0 from 0 till 360 degrees. So, for number 5, when I'm saying determine where g of x is greater than 0, they're referring to in terms of x value. So it is greater than 0. We are talking about what we can see. It is greater than 0 means it is on the top part of the y. It is from 0 degrees till the end there, which is 360 degrees. Now, why am I using square brackets? Because they have an underline in the inequality. Had they not had an underline, then I would have used round brackets. Now look at the next one. Determine where g of x, which is the cos graph, is smaller than f of x. So where is g of x 
underneath f of x. If you see here, the blue is under the yellow. So they're not talking of that. Then here, the yellow is underneath the blue. And that's why they're saying underneath means less. So g of x is less than f of x. So the yellow is under the blue. So this part I want. And then it changes again. The yellow is on top. So this part I don't want. Now what is my answer? You see, if you look at that drawing, the only part where the blue is on top of the yellow, or so to speak, according to the question, where the yellow is under the blue, is from this point to this point. The answer is in referral to the x value. So all I want is the x value. That is the reason most of the time they give it to you in the graph. The values of the x is given. Now let's see what is the value of the x at this specific point. It's 26,6. And it's going to 206,6. Why again square brackets? Because the inequality has a line under it. Then the next question. Give the period of f of x and g of x. Now, I told you in grade 10 that is standard. f of x is a sun graph. So the period is 360 degrees. And g of x is a cos graph, which means the period is 360 degrees. If I ask you what is the period of a tan graph, it's 180 degrees. Thank you for watching.